In this tutorial, we're going to learn about setting up your app's custom domain with three of the most popular providers. A custom domain allows you to point your app to yourdomain.com, .io, or .net if those are still a thing. And for this, we'll need our app to be on a personal plan or above. On the free plan and on a premium plan, if you haven't added a custom domain yet, your app will be hosted at yourappname.bubbleapps.io. While this is great for getting your app started, as you continue to build and grow, you'll want to customize the domain to better brand your app. Once you add a custom domain, your app name that you've used so far is never visible to your users. So if your desired app name on Bubble isn't available, a custom domain name is your way to change it. Under Settings Domain Email, we have an input box for where our custom domain goes. Adding a custom domain to your Bubble app is as simple as typing the domain in. Type the domain that you purchased from your domain provider into this box and click set up this domain. And that's it, that's all you have to do in Bubble. The rest happens at your domain registrar. We can close out of the API keys box for this tutorial. But if you wanna learn how to set up your API keys, check out the tutorial in the description below. From here, Bubble will give us the DNS records we need to bring to our domain provider. To set up these records, I'm going to show you how it works with the top three most popular providers. GoDaddy, Google Domains, and Namecheap. Here we have an account with GoDaddy and a domain name already purchased. As a note, we only purchase the domain name and not hosting services that they provide. To see our domain, we click Visit My Account and scroll down. Our domain has a few actions, but we just want to set up the domain's DNS records. So we'll click DNS. This takes us to a page where our domain records are, and since we just purchased the domain, this is what we are given by default. We'll delete any existing A and C name records by hitting the trash can icon, and we'll start fresh by clicking on the Add button below. All we need to do is add the four A records that Bubble gave us. So back in Bubble, we'll copy the first two records with the blank name and not the www. With the first one copied, we'll add it as a new A record. When it asks for the host name, we'll put an at symbol to represent that it's blank and hit save. We'll repeat this process for the next blank record. Once we've added those two, we'll do the same thing for the www records. This time, as we add them in, we will change the host name from the at symbol to www. With all four of these records added, we're done. Back in Bubble, we'll click Check My Settings to see if the DNS has propagated. If this doesn't work right away, give it time to propagate, come back later, and try again. Once it does, you're all set. Now when we preview, we can see our app lives on our own custom domain from GoDaddy. Here we have an account with Google Domains and a domain name purchased. On the left hand side, we'll click DNS. We'll scroll down to the bottom of the page where it says Custom Resource Records, and there we'll add our A records. Back in Bubble, we'll copy the first two A records, which have a blank name and not www. With the first one copied, we'll click the plus button and repeat this process for the next blank A record. By default, the host name is blank, which is represented by the at symbol here. Now that we have our blank records grouped, we can hit add. Once we have those two added, we'll do the same thing for the www records. This time, as we add them in, we'll change the host name from the at symbol to www. We'll click the plus button and copy the final record and paste it in. Now with the www records grouped together, we'll hit add. The TTL, or time to live settings on Google, say our domain will usually be live within an hour, but allow for up to 48 hours for it to fully propagate. Back in Bubble, we'll click check my settings to see if the DNS is propagated. And just like that, the domain propagated. If this doesn't work right away, give it time to propagate, come back later and try again. Now when we preview, we can see our app lives on our own custom domain from Google Domains. Here we have an account with Namecheap and a domain name purchased. 
in our account dashboard, we'll find the domain we purchased and click Manage. From there, we'll click Advanced DNS, and we'll see two records that we can delete. Once these records are deleted, we'll head back to our Bubble app and go into our settings, Domain Email. We'll copy the first two A records, which have a blank name and not www. With the first one copied, we'll add a new A record. When it asks for the host name, we'll put an at symbol to represent that it's blank. Then, we'll paste in the first record like so and hit save. We'll repeat this process for the next blank record. Once we have those two added, we'll do the same thing for the www records. This time, as we add them in, we'll change the host name from the at symbol to www. With all four of these A records added, we're done. The TTL, or Time to Live settings on Namecheap, say that our domain will usually be live within 30 minutes, or automatic, but allow for up to 24 hours for it to fully propagate. Back in Bubble, we'll click Check My Settings to see if the DNS is propagated. If this doesn't work right away, give it time to propagate, come back later, and try again. Now when we preview, we can see our app lives on our own custom domain from Namecheap. As said throughout this video, when you save records into your domain provider, it starts to propagate, which really can take up to 24 hours. And in that time, it's very common for your site to have a page not found look. This is totally normal. Please give it time to propagate. And in the meantime, you can do something else like stretching or going for a jog, reading a book, or you can actually work on your app. Even though your domain is propagating, the editor will still function as normal. So you can keep building while you wait. Your domain doesn't always have to be the main domain for your app, and in some cases, subdomains are preferred for hosting the app itself. If you want to have your app hosted on app.yourdomain.com, you would add the subdomain to your app and get two records back. You would put the name of the subdomain in the host instead of www. This can be done in any of the domain registrars mentioned in this video. The benefit to doing this would be to offload any marketing or landing page for your main.com to a different provider and let Bubble solely host your app. Every bubbleapps.io domain and custom domain will automatically add SSL encryption to your domain. The padlock in the address bar is SSL encryption and it lets you guarantee to your users that no one can intercept traffic between them and your site and it protects their private information. SSL encryption also helps with search engine rankings and can be required to use some features like geolocation or Stripe payments. So it's important that you know it comes out of the box. When you click into your domain input box, you won't be able to modify it. If you needed to change or delete it, you would do so by either clicking change or delete. From there, you can add in a new domain. However, changing or deleting your domain only does so on your Bubble app. This does not delete the records from your domain provider. Head to where your domain is hosted and delete all of the A records for that domain for it to fully take effect. Then give it some time to delete. If you've deleted both the name from your app and the records from your domain provider and your domain is still working, try and clear your browser's cache and then refresh the page. Once you've fully deleted or changed your domain, be sure to go through with the steps outlined in this video to add a new one. Just like before, when your app was hosted on .bubbleapps.io, you still have access to both development and live modes, though now they are hosted on your own domain instead of .bubbleapps.io. So now when you preview your app, development mode will run from your custom domain. And when you deploy, so will live mode. We've now seen how to set up domains with three of the most popular providers and how easy it is to add domains to Bubble. While there are other providers that didn't make this tutorial, the steps are largely the same. That's it for this tutorial. For more, be sure to check out bubble.io slash academy.